Hey, this is Jan from Coding with Jan. I'm an educational partner for topics related to Shopify development. And today we'll take a look at Shopify's new theme blocks, which help us build flexible layouts and break down sections into smaller reusable pieces of liquid. In this first video, we will cover how theme blocks can be used inside the theme customizer. Then we will also see the difference between theme blocks and traditional section blocks. And lastly, we will explore the technical details and coding background a little more. So it should be a lot of fun and let's dive right in. All right, so then let's first have a look at the theme editor or theme customizer experience. Right now I'm working in a development store and as you can tell, I have a fresh copy of the Horizon theme installed. If you don't have Horizon yet, you can just scroll down to the bottom of this page and then find it right here under popular free themes. Or you can also navigate to the official Shopify theme store and then find Horizon under the free themes category. Once the theme is installed, let's bring up the customizer. And once everything is loaded, you will see that Horizon already comes with two sections on the homepage per default. For one, this hero section, we have already uploaded the background image and adjusted the headline. And then also this product list, where we can select a collection of our choice to display some of our favorite products. Now looking at our component tree on the left, we can already see one of the first differences between theme blocks and traditional section blocks, because theme blocks can be nested up to eight levels deep. The biggest difference though, is that theme blocks can be reused across multiple sections of a theme. So if we go into one of these sections, for example, the hero section, and then click on this little plus icon to add a new block, we can choose from a variety of different elements that are built into the theme, ranging from basic elements like buttons, headlines, text, all the way up to more complicated elements, such as product cards, recommended products, variant picker, and many more. The reason this is so powerful is because now we only have to develop theme blocks once and they can be reused anywhere, kind of like mini components of a Shopify theme. In order to explain this even better, I've also prepared an example on a theme that still follows the traditional architecture. And here we have two sections, an image banner and a rich text section. And as you can tell, both contain very similar elements. They both have a heading followed by some text and then a button. But since we're following the traditional architecture, we can't share or reuse these elements across multiple sections. And that also means we have to develop them individually for every section. And then we end up with a lot of duplicated code because we might need a button on multiple sections. And it's also harder to maintain because if we want to make a change to let's say all buttons in the future, we have to do it in multiple places and not just one. Another major benefit of theme blocks is the flexibility they provide. And we've already mentioned that they can be nested up to eight levels deep, but this really allows us to build flexible layouts like rows, columns, or even more complex layouts. To illustrate that, I've prepared two examples, where in the first one, we're displaying some of our blog articles. And in the second section, we present the coffee blend of the month. Now let's have a look at the first one. So here I just started with a custom section. And first we have a heading block for the headline, and then one group for the rest of the content. And here I divided this into headline and group so that I can stack these elements vertically. Inside the content group that holds all the articles, I'm now organizing content horizontally because I wanted to have this three column layout. And then every block article is a group itself consisting of an image, a headline, and then a small text extract. And that just repeats for the other block articles as well. For the second example, I've also started with a custom section. And yet again, I've divided the headline and the main content to stack them vertically. And the main content is then divided into the left and right column. So on the left, we then have a product card and on the right column, I just stacked two images. And it takes a bit of practice to learn how to structure your elements. But once you get a hang of this, the new flexibility is awesome. And if you're already a developer, you will also notice that this is very similar to building HTML layouts. Yeah, so this is quite powerful. It lets you build almost anything that the theme might be missing out of the box. Okay, so now that we have a good understanding of how theme blocks behave in the theme editor, let's take a closer look at the technical backgrounds. Previously, we've already seen how traditional section blocks are tied to a specific section. And that also means they have to be defined in the corresponding section file. In this specific example, if we take a look at the image banner section file, we can find an implementation for a heading, then a text element, and then for the buttons. And then likewise, if we take a look at the rich text section, 
we can find very similar elements, a caption or headline, a text element, and then a button. So this means we end up with a bit of duplicated code and it also becomes harder to maintain if we use similar elements across multiple sections. Now switching over to the New Horizon theme, in order to achieve decoupling of all the theme blocks and section files, we now find a new folder called blocks. And inside this folder, we find all the theme blocks that are available on Horizon per default. As you see right here, all the theme blocks are .liquid files. And if we open one of these files, for example, the payment icons, you can see that they are usually divided into two parts. For one, the actual implementation of that block. So all the markup, HTML, CSS, and everything that defines how this block is displayed on the front end. And the second part is the schema that contains all the settings that are available for this block and everything that we need in order to configure this block from the theme editor. Okay, now if you want to get started building your own theme blocks, I think the best way to go about it is to first start with the simplest example possible. So that's exactly what I've done right here. I've created a new file called my test block inside the blocks folder. And inside the schema tag, I started by defining the required attributes. So first of all, every block needs a name. So I just named it my first block. Then we have an array of settings indicated by square brackets. And here I only provided one setting of type text. So this is just a simple text input with a label and also an ID so that we can later reference this text input in our markup. And then lastly, I also defined some presets which determine how this block is going to appear on the theme editor. And they're also required if you want your block to show up in the first place. And here you can provide a default configuration. So in this case, I named it programming example and then set my text input to hold the value hello world. But you can also provide multiple presets for different use cases. And this is very helpful if you want to provide merchants with certain layouts or certain use cases for your block, especially if they get more complex. Okay, now in theory, this theme block would be good to go and we can start using it. However, in practice, we also need to make sure that the sections where we want to use this theme block are configured in the right way so that they accept the theme blocks. And that's what I want to show you next. Earlier, we've already seen the custom section that I've used to build my coffee block layout and prototype the coffee of the month section. So this custom section clearly accepts theme blocks. Let's take a quick look at how this is configured. So here I brought up the corresponding section file. And if we take a look at the schema, we find that this section is configured to accept blocks, blocks of type theme. So that means it accepts all the available theme blocks. And down below, we can also see that it accepts app theme blocks, which we're not going to be covering in this video. But this is the important part. We accept all blocks of type theme. And accepting all theme blocks is a conscious decision. You can also limit this if you want. So you can be very specific and say, hey, we only want to accept theme blocks of type my test block, for instance. But yeah, in this case, it makes more sense to just accept all the theme blocks. At this point, I think it's also mention worthy that you cannot mix traditional section blocks and the new theme blocks. So you have to decide for one or the other. And now the last thing I want to show you in here is where the content for all the blocks is rendered because here we find a new liquid variable called content for blocks. So all the content of all the blocks that might be added to the section later on will be put out right here. And this is one of the use cases where it's done dynamically. But if at any point in the future you want to render a very specific block and not do it dynamically, you can do that by using static blocks and then you would just use content for block and then also define the block type that you want to render. Okay, awesome. Super quick recap. Now we've defined our very first theme block, a simple text input, and we've made sure that at least one section is accepting the global theme blocks. And now let's test everything on the front end. So here we are back on the theme editor. And if we now try to edit one of the custom sections that I've already used right here, maybe the coffee block layout, and then click on add new block. We should already find our newly defined block right here. Programming example. Awesome. Let's add this block. And then we can see that the default value is hello world. That's what we defined inside the presets. But of course, we could also change this to everything we want. And it's fully flexible. 
And because this is defined as a global theme block, we should now also be able to reuse this on any section that accepts global theme blocks. So if we scroll up to the hero section, for example, we should be able to use the exact same block right here without having to build it from scratch. Awesome. And that's pretty much it. That's the entire process of setting up a theme block from scratch. First, we have to build the theme block, define all the settings that it's going to accept, and then also how everything is rendered on the front end. And then we have to make sure that the sections where we want to use our new block also accept blocks of type theme or specifically the one that we just created. And this is also the exact same process that you follow if you want to create nested theme blocks. Earlier in this video, we've already discussed that theme blocks can be nested up to eight levels deep. So if you want your theme blocks to accept further blocks, we just have to go into the schema and also say that we accept blocks of type theme. And then we also need to render the content somewhere. So this could be in a simple div for now, where we put out all the content dynamically using the new liquid variable content for blocks. And if we save that and then quickly check back on the theme customizer, our self-made theme block now accepts further blocks that can be nested inside. How cool is that? All right, and that's everything for this video. We've already come a very long way here. We've seen how theme blocks can be used on the theme editor, also how they can be used to prototype more complex layouts and flexible layouts. Then we've explored the difference between traditional section blocks and the new global theme blocks, as well as all the technical backgrounds and how to build them from scratch, as well as how to nest theme blocks. So yeah, I really hope you learned something new and enjoyed this one. And also we have planned further lessons where we will walk you through a real world hands-on freelancing example. And then we'll also explore the new AI generated theme blocks in greater detail. So that's going to be exciting. Keep an eye out for these. And for now, have an amazing rest of your day. I'll catch you later. Bye.